right. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Breakthrough Society podcast. I'm your host, Irvin, and I'm here with Bill Ryman. What's going on, Bill? How you doing, man? Doing great, man. <laughs> we had a we had a pretty long conversation before we hit record here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that could have been a whole podcast within itself, that whole conversation. Yeah. Uh, it was For like real, 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, dude, finally uh, was able to get you on the podcast. Thanks for taking the time to be here. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I was looking forward to you. I obviously had you on mine, so happy to return the favor. Yeah, yes, sir. <laughs> well, first question I always ask my guests is just tell everybody who Bill is and what do you do? Uh, so Bill Ryman is, uh, I'm a broker and a builder, uh, in the Southwest Florida, Naples, Marco Island area. So I, I build custom homes for a living. Uh, don't do commercial, just do custom res- uh, new residential doing more of the luxury end, uh, to family owned business. Um, along with my brother and sister, um, so been doing that, grew up in the business, so been in construction my whole entire life. Also, I'm a licensed real estate broker going on, I think, 10 years now. Uh, so I kind of do real estate as a, you know, construction is always my main focus. Real estate, obviously, and construction intertwined together. So they work out great. And uh, so I've been doing a lot of real estate. I sell a lot of real estate as a part-time agent last year. I think I pushed over $25 million in sales so it's pretty good for a part-time agent uh already on pace this year uh to break that so it's been it's been good a lot of work a lot of grind i also do a home watch business that i started too which branches off of both of those uh and then i also um do quite a few other things i do investing stuff like that uh, we're trying to get more into real estate investing too, doing, doing like we talked about for a good 45 minutes of <laughs> sports card investing as well. Yeah. So I uh, started a little, open a little shop on eBay, uh, hobby hour is my thing. And then um, got to open my LLC here. I just been putting it off. So with that one, so yeah, man, I may, I wear many hats. So, <laughs> so nice. Man. So uh, what was your first hustle of like your actual hustle that you used to have? Uh, first one ever. Yeah, but like as... they used to have. Yeah, like they used to currently have. Because I know a lot of people like before they actually get into their main gig. Um, yeah. You know, they start like small businesses or, or jobs like before that. Yeah, so... I, I've jumped around. Um, like I've always been the one to try and do different things. I've always been a salesman. Let's put it that way. Uh, so I've kind of always tried to figure out and follow where I can make money. I don't like to have money sit. So, uh, you know, like I've, I, I sold cars in my past. Um, for, I did that out of the blue cause I wanted to make money. I was tired of being digging ditches and stuff like that. So I saw an opportunity when I got done playing college football cause I got hurt. I was, I played college football for two years but um, once I got done with football, I kind of was like, all right, I'm going to take a break from college. And then I went and ended up working in the car business because my sister's boyfriend at the time was selling cars. He's like, hey, man, you make a lot of good money doing this. I'll get you a job. I was 20 years old, uh, youngest by far. And uh, dove in, had no idea what I was doing. Never sold anything like that before. Uh, I remember I, I told this story in the past uh, with that whole thing was... Um, kind of got thrown in with the wolves obviously car salesmen they were all probably about 30 years older than me and uh you know slick back hair and you know (laughs) just there's this 20 year old kid out there and i remember the main guy that sold what that was their top salesman wouldn't even look at me or talk to me you know he thought his shit hey can i cuss on this yeah (laughs) (laughs) he thought his shit didn't stink basically and uh um i remember that it pissed me off So I said, I'm going to set out to beat this guy. So after uh, what I actually did is I actually, um, I, I had to learn what I was selling. So that's how I knew I'd get better at it. I went in the brochure room that they had, took every single vehicle's brochure and I went home and I sat 
and wrote down every single car on two separate notepads of the make and the model of what they were every detail about them and i carried those two notepads with me every single day so every car i showed i bust out that notepad read off of it (laughs) until i memorized it and eventually i got i i had every car memorized well my second month there i started climbing up the leaderboard third month i was top in sales uh fourth month top in sales in both departments and fifth month top in sales again so let's put it this way. That guy started talking to me, kissing my ass because he knew <laughs> I was beating him every month. And uh, I, I ended up leaving the car business. They were actually trying to progress me in it, but I didn't want to do that. It wasn't what I would. Plus, I was young. I was like 21 when I left there. Wanted to go back to college because when we're in college, what do we think of you know, parties and girls? And I don't yeah. want to live my 21-year-old <laughs> days as a car salesman but that was kind of my first i mean i've sold stuff prior to that i remember in college when i was playing football to make money uh this is probably illegal don't do it at (laughs) home but uh, i remember making money off of uh, i I had i I took a girl's bra wire um and i actually was making deals in the because the laundry room had quarter machines so the bra wire I figured out was the size of a quarter, the thickness of a quarter. So I would actually take the bra wire <laughs> and use it as credits for the laundry. So I started charging other guys less on the football team for uh, for laundry. <laughs> it was one thing, <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. So I've done. I mean, when I was a little kid, man, I sold like I pick up old golf balls on a golf course and I resold those on the side of a golf course. I I always had some of the sports cards. I mean, as a kid growing up, traded Pokemon cards as a kid on the bus, tr- flipping Pokemon cards. So I always kind of had that that ambition to uh, do what I do. Like it's led to what I do today. So yeah, it all like correlates to <laughs> same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, cool man. So like, how did you get into the construction? Um. My I grew up in it. My dad was uh, always in construction since I was obviously born. So my dad was a hard worker. That's what kind of instilled it in me. Um, I never really saw him growing up as a little kid, but it didn't bother me because I saw him when it mattered. You know, like football games, stuff like that. I, that's the first thing I would do is look up in the st- stands, make sure my dad was there, my mom. But he was always there. Uh, so, he, you know, but he worked. He always worked. He'd work late. He'd come home. Uh, my, and he, you know, fall asleep hanging out with us, like, cause he was tired and he just kind of seeing that growing up and still to me is that it's something I need to do too. Um, you know, I was talking about it with you. Uh, it's my girlfriend thinks I'm nuts because I'm always on my computer editing or I'm sorting cards or I'm doing, uh, something that's going to continuously get me to be better, you know, and stuff like that and always trying to find a way. But that's how I got into the business. My dad was in it. Um, so growing up, he always made us work. He always made us work for what we wanted. So if I wanted a new video game system or something like that, I had to work for it. He wouldn't get it. He said, you want that? You work for it. You want a game or you want something, you know, you have to work for it. Go do this. Go do that. Uh, he had us doing stuff as kids we probably should have not have done, like being a <laughs> up high scaffolding and stuff like that but um it's just we learned from a young age that you have to earn what you get and uh he so yeah to answer your question without hopping all over the place that's kind of how i grew up in the business he was a concrete guy uh for a long time started his own business from scratch and got into custom homes in illinois and then we moved down to Florida in the 90s, 95. And I always worked for him growing up, like all the time, sweeping jobs, digging ditches, doing doing the work nobody wants to do. But that's what it was a love hate thing with construction when I was growing <laughs> up. Now I love it, but hated it as a kid. So. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's that's the same way that I grew up. You know, my dad, um, and now we talked about it in your podcast where uh, my dad has his electrical company back home. And, you know, growing up elementary, middle school days or all the way to high school until I graduated high school every summer, every um, spring break, Christmas break, Thanksgiving, you know, it's always, you know, they take you to work, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they got they got to instill like the work, work, they, work ethic in you. And the same, like if you want something, you have to work for it. Um, my dad would always tell me that nothing's free. 
Yeah. Like nothing, nothing's ever free. So if somebody's offering you something for free, you gotta, you know, check twice. Oh yeah. Well, I yeah. remember. I mean, even in college, I, I when I went back to college to finish up, I went to USF and I actually joined the fraternity and stuff like that. And I remember they would have fraternity parties on the weekends, and I'd have to go home to work. Yeah, you know, my friends would think I'm not. So, like, well, you're leaving. There's a party. I'm like, I have to, you know. And my dad would be like, I don't give a shit what your party is. He's like, come home and work. I need you to work, yeah. you know. And I needed money and stuff like that. I also worked nights and clubs and stuff like that in college as well. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, when he needed me to work, I even when I didn't have a car at one time, I took a Greyhound bus. Home. <laughs> uh, he made yeah. me take a bus home because I uh, actually wrecked my truck dumb story but uh uh i was being dumb but long story but it was uh he's like yeah you need to i need you this weekend uh figure it out i was like all right (laughs) ask my roommate if he can drive me he goes i'm not driving two and a half or three hours to take you home i was like all right and he goes take a bus i went to the bus station took a greyhound home three hours and he picked me up at the taco bell on the corner and (laughs) all weekend and he dropped me off so (laughs) Yeah, well, I think that's a good the good way to get to uh, be raised, right? Because, I mean, like, look at you now, but like, yeah. like, like back then, I mean, you hated that, right? Same thing. Like, I didn't, I didn't hate construction or anything back then, but, um, I mean, yeah, like I would rather you know go out with my friends mm-hmm. during spring break or during the summer or whatever. And I mean, I would like during spring break go out to the beach, but just like one night, you know, one day go one day spend the night come back the other day it wasn't like the whole week like everybody else oh yeah i did the same thing man i spring breaks i would work all i'd go for like a weekend and everybody else would be there for the week and i'd have to go home and work yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's good because it's like now now everybody i feel like all of those people are still partying and still doing all that stuff and you know us that we had to work is like we have this like work ethic now and we use it to to our advantage now oh yeah yeah a hundred percent like i i definitely agree with you um if i didn't do that and i was a partier like you know and doing and don't get me wrong i had fun in college stuff like that but um and even in high school and stuff but it was just whenever i remember even on weekends after like football practice i'd have to come home and work and and do stuff too is just it it instilled in me a respect for literally having to work hard for what you want i continuously do that to this day like and and it's just i it's that drive like if i go to bed i don't know it's weird if i go to bed like early like i feel like i still got to get something done you know (laughs) like i and then i it's so i'm like up till like 12 12 30 i wake up early and i go to the gym and then i start my day again but I don't take naps. I'm not a napper because I feel like naps waste time. Uh, yeah. You know, I've never been a napper because I'm constantly thinking too much of what I could be doing, and that's a different mindset too to have. It's it's not everybody has that. There's a lot of people that are like, oh, I need to take a quick nap. You know, I'm tired. <laughs> this and that. I'm like, no, yeah. man, you're wasting time. That hour nap or that 30 minutes, I can get a lot done. So, it's a difference maker yeah dude for sure like you you think back of those moments and like you're grateful for that right and how you were saying that like when somebody else says oh i need to take a nap i'm tired you, like you're looking at them like no dude like you don't need a nap <laughs> you need to get your shit done and drink your coffee like, man go through the drive there grab a coffee at starbucks it'll take you three minutes versus that 35 minute nap or whatever you yeah. take you know and then you'll have an energy and just keep going sleep at night <laughs> so yeah. not against nappers you know nothing against you nappers out there some people just have to do it and they do a little power nap and nothing against that but it's just i'm different i'm wired different i can't do it <laughs> so. yeah dude. yeah um do you feel like because i know you're doing 75 hard right now so do you feel that 75 hard like i just added fuel to that mindset uh big time big time yeah because uh there's no drinking there's no unhealthy eating there's no there's a lot more product i mean it's hard it really is hard that's why it's 75 hard and i'm experiencing how hard it is because when you're when you're in my business you i'm a social drinker like i went to a golf outing two two weekends ago for a charity event with a customer of mine 
high end golf outing, a lot of high end clientele there, stuff like that. And open bar golf carts, driving around, serving everybody. The guy I was with, you know, is, is asking me constantly, come on, are you going to have something? No, I can't. No, I can't. What's wrong with you? Can't do it for another 45 days or whatever, you know? And then I'm in the business. I have a decorator. He owns a big decorating firm. He asked me, he goes, when are you done with this challenge? I go, why? He goes, because we're going to the Keys. I got a bunch of high-end clientele coming. I can't just have <laughs> you standing there. I was like, I got to get it done. He goes, can't you just get it done earlier? I go, it doesn't work like that. So, I mean, it's <laughs> it's, it's not just the drink. I needed it personally. I mean, I, you know, I found myself slipping back to kind of, you know, I'm a very productive person, but I wasn't as productive. Now I'm just crazily productive, craziness as far as productivity. Cause it's like, you know, you don't, you, I don't know. It adds a whole nother level. Yeah. I got like, after this, I got to go for another, I'm going to do an outdoor walk for 45 minutes. Like, but it's like, and I actually enjoy those walks, even though you got to walk fast, but I enjoy those walks that, Cause it's like that time alone to reset my mind and then I'll come back and I'll start like editing or I'll sort cards <laughs> or I'll, yeah. you know, and I'm right back to it. Um, you know, and it's just, it's, it's been good though. It's been challenging just fitting the schedule in and getting everything done. I still got to read like, you know, it's just, that's, a, that's a big challenge with it. And, but the weekends are challenging too. But uh, it's I, once I do something and I put my mindset to it, I won't fail. I almost failed once though. I started laying down. And I forgot my progress picture. Oh, I started dude. laying down, <laughs> and I almost fell asleep. But my my girlfriend came in there and came home in the room, and and like I was like, oh, and I thought I was like, oh crap, I didn't do the progress picture. So thank God she came in there because yeah. <laughs> I would have been out. <laughs> oh, that been, uh, dude. Yeah. So it, that saved saved me from uh doing it for 30 something days and starting over <laughs> so. yeah dude uh and it's crazy how like man because like when i started doing it uh like once i could took control of, of myself as a person like everything else around me just got so much easier i guess like i was able to, to i mean i control everything else but it, you, you feel like you can control everything else around you if you get what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like today. Like work or something. Oh, yeah. Today's like a big. Like go to work, yeah. Well, today's a big example of that. Um, like my day was nuts. It was all over the board. I had two, two meetings in person with people. In between those meetings, I have to train somebody. I have to handle our warranty stuff. So I'm like constantly bouncing around you know and constantly like but but you know stress piles up and without this and having that clarity to be able to kind of function and get stuff done and 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 say all right you got time to do that i don't know my mind's so much clearer too that's another thing and i'm like all right you can put this here you can move this here you can do like i said i had two podcasts scheduled for tomorrow and saturday and you know, it's like before I would have been like, I can't do it. I just can't. But I'm like, no, you can move this here. People are going to understand you're busy. You know, I got people flying in town. I got to show property. Stuff comes up. Uh, you know, stress wise, it's helped me big time because being in two, the construction business and real estate, it's a lot uh, on somebody's plate. And um, I think not if I would have not have done this and kept down the road I was going uh, yeah, I wouldn't be where I'm at today and like where I'm at being able to kind of conquer all these different things and and work it the way I have been too. Now I'm, I'm grateful I did it. You know, do I miss beer? Yes. I love beer. <laughs> I love a good IPA. I'm sorry. I'm never going to not do that. So that's probably the yeah. first thing on day 76 that I'm going to celebrate with is a big ice cold beer IPA, preferably and some chicken wings. Oh, or some dude. Mexican food too. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. So I'm gonna, I'll probably yeah not feel good the next day, but yeah, it's gonna be well earned. So <laughs> yeah, dude, that's that's you're preaching right there, man, with the chicken wings and the beer. <laughs> yeah, but like every time I go to the bar now, it's like because I'm not on it, right? So so, uh, but I think like should I get a beer or not? And then I, at the last second, I'll be like, I don't need it. You yeah. know. 
type of thing. I mean, I like drinking, you know, but I, I mean, even before I wasn't a big drinker, but if I would just go to the restaurant to see, you know, like at night, it would have to be a beer. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah. now it's like, it doesn't have to be a beer. Yeah. So they yeah. helped me out with that. Like, you know, I don't need it type of deal. I think it's going to be that way with me too. Um, like, do I really need it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be that way with me to where it's going to be kind of like, you know, because I haven't had any alcohol in so long that I think it's gonna finally where I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to like I don't know yeah I'm not just gonna want a beer because I need one after a long week like it's just gonna be like eh you know if I'm out I'll have one drink or something but you know now nah, that that'll be good so I don't know we'll see it's a whole different <laughs> this is a whole different world and I'm getting it done so. You know, I got stuff to do after this. Still got to eat, eat, then I still got to walk, and then I still got to read, and then I got to do some other stuff for work, too, so my day doesn't stop. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Dude, so how, how did you, uh, man, I want to ask you, like, about the your house that you're building, right? Because I saw on your Instagram one time where, I mean, what was it, like, a week ago, where you, the you had all this blue tape all around the, <laughs> all around the walls? Um and I, I asked I asked you that question in the in that that uh, chat that you had last At Thursday. Clubhouse, yeah. Yeah. So like, do you feel that that's like a problem in builders? Because I know like we're both part of Arte, right? So like, you know how Andy they always he always spits out um, like doing things perfectly. Mm-hmm. You know, don't just like half-ass it type of deal. Um, so that's what I see. That's like a huge lag in the construction industry all the subcontractors and even a lot of the contractors that i've come across actually most probably all of them um i mean they like you know skip stuff they skip the small stuff the little details type of thing so i feel like nobody really is about that you know perfection high quality kind of stuff like do you feel that that's the problem like we're in your area yeah uh here i'll pause right there for you whatever i think you're because you got feedback on your um are you is there something on your desk i think it's under your mic are you like twisting something on your hand or something there's like feedback it's like every time yeah is there's like something like that keeps going oh it's part of the paper yeah that's what it is <laughs> I was like, you can hear it big time on my end yeah mike i know you're recording so i know you're gonna be like crap yeah shit. It. yeah but no it's not bad like it's like just i want to give you a heads up now uh, before we keep going because it's like making that like a scratching noise on my end too okay. i gotta look out fellow podcaster man i gotta look <laughs> out because that's gonna be a yeah, heck of an edit just... but oh we'll keep rolling um what was the question again uh oh yeah the blue tape thing do i see that uh yeah part... I, can, I, mean, I can ask it again so yeah go ahead um like in in the construction industry like where you're from or or since you started it do you feel that that like the high quality uh perfection type of thing is like a huge there's like a huge gap in that in the in the custom home builds over there because i know i feel like you're doing it right like you're like detailing everything you want everything to look perfect of course, right? Because mm-hmm. you want to, you want the end product to look good for for your clients. But I like, I feel like, every, out of everybody that I've come across, like all the home builders, I feel like you're the only one that's actually doing it like that, like the way that it's supposed to be. You know, everybody else is kind of like half-assing it. You know, just just doing it to make it look good enough. Um, like, do you feel that that's like a big gap in the industry, construction industry? I do a hundred percent. Um, and the reason, cause I've seen other builder stuff and I know for a fact, they don't go to the extent that we do. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, it takes time. And that's, that's part of the issue is they say they don't have the time to do it. But like, you know, you talk about the blue tape thing. Um, a second ago, it, it, we blue taped, so for people that don't know me and we do a drywall punch out this isn't even the regular punch out for paint usually people just do a or builders just do a paint punch out or before the final walkthrough or whatever but we actually do a drywall punch out because we're doing a lot of level five smooth coat 
drywall on the interiors smooth coat you can't really hide any, any imperfection and if there is we see it uh so most builders wouldn't take care of those imperfections even the little ones like a little bubble in the drywall mud whatever we do we're fanatics about having everything perfect and uh that's why we we do what we do and we are who we are as a builder um so is there a gap with that yeah because i think people the builders think because of time they don't have it uh they don't want to take the time to do it because it is a lot of commitment like it took me and my brother all day to do that that was a 4200 square foot house uh, actually oh. it took us two days but and that's two days of our time that we could have been doing other stuff but it's all about kind of blocking out that time too like i didn't have meetings that day i made it so i can help him and uh, we do it personally because we know what to look for on that end and how to do it the right way. We, we want it done a certain way, and it's hard to have. Like, we have a laborer that works for us. It's hard to have him do it because uh, he's not going to go to the extent that we do and see yeah. the stuff that we do, too. So, I mean, that's the thing to your listeners. I mean, the video you saw, there was just blue tape covered on every single <laughs> little thing you could imagine. And it took some time, but it, it we got it done right, and that's going to help us in that next walkthrough because the painters are there. They're almost wrapped up now. And uh, once the painters are done, uh, we'll obviously keep, go to the next steps in the house, but then we'll do a full-on construction clean, make sure everything's clean, perfect, and then we'll walk through and do a paint punch out. And after that paint punch out, we'll go through again, clean it, and then we'll do another walkthrough and punch out, and then we'll do a final walkthrough. So it's a bit extensive the way we do it, but when you're paying $2 million for a home, it should be expected. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why we we do what we do because we impress people too, but that's why we have the re the reputation that we do. You know, my dad's always taught us that clean job sites, every, every, everything spotless, make sure everything's picked up, make sure the subs pick up everything. And, and people appreciate that. They respect it. That's why we get a lot of the business we do. Uh, is just because we go above and beyond on that aspect of things too. You know, it's just a lot of builders don't do it. They want to rush it. They yeah. they want to do it as quick as possible, turn them and burn them. We <laughs> we aren't that. You know, we're not that builder. We're we're gonna not so much. Take, we want to get the job done, but we're also gonna make sure it's done right. Uh, from the trim to I mean, from the way it's built, from the exterior to the interior cabinetry, the trim. You know, I mark up cabinets all the time and it's little things that nobody would see, but I see them and I mark them. You know, if I see them, okay, maybe down the road, the customer is going to see it. Even if they don't, they're still impressed. You know, it's just, it's doing those things that other people aren't going to do is what kind of expands you and, and separates you from the rest of the competition. So yeah. have you ever had a fire any subcontractors because they don't live up to that standard? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're dealing with a situation now with painters. Uh, you know, they thought we, uh, they basically cost <laughs> us, co they cost us money. Um, so we're dealing with it. They actually ended up costing us more money than what was owed to them. So now we're dealing with them in court just because, um, oh. yeah, yeah, because they decided they wanted to come after us for that money. But we have documentation pictures of everything that was done. So, and I fired them uh, personally too because they were arguing with me about certain things that we wanted. It was once again, they didn't like that we over, they were working for certain builders that didn't require them to do the things that we required them to do. Like make sure the paint is right, sand it down, resand it, redo it. Uh, one of the interior doors that they painted looked like, uh, they threw, you know, I don't even know. They the paint just splattered on it. It wasn't, even smooth, <laughs> you know, it, it yeah. like door, interior doors are supposed to be smooth, but this thing was just looked like somebody threw ice cream at it, you know. <laughs> so it was like uh, that started the whole situation, and then they took forever, weeks to come back and do stuff. They were overextended. I knew that part because they were doing a lot of other builders. And if you can't, if you're going to overextend yourself and not do a quality work, we're going to get rid of you. And you just lost one of the best builders in the area. So, you know, it's just, it's, 
we give people opportunity. A lot of our subcontractors know how we work. They respect how we work. If they do wrong, they fix it. Uh, those are the guys that have been with us for a long time. Uh, the guys that don't want to fix stuff that needs to be fixed, then we move on to we found find somebody that's motivated and wants to do it too. We found a really good painter. Uh, he doesn't do any other builders because new construction, he sees how much work is in it compared to just doing residential side jobs for people. But yeah. <laughs> uh, he respects us. He's got a good crew. He pays them good. We pay him good because he, he earns the money. So he's an expensive painter, but he did what he <laughs> paid for. Oh, you know? yeah. So it's just, yeah, do it right. And yeah, we've had to fire subs. So <laughs> Nice, yeah. Shit, I got to get into like home building too over here in Austin. <laughs> I see everybody half assing too much stuff. If you do it right, man, that's a, that's the thing. Like, I know some guys in Arte that are younger that um, Johnny Lee was one of them. He was on my podcast, and, and I told him, I mean, just go do it right, go above and beyond for customers. People will see your work, your work will speak for itself. Somebody will come along, you'll do another one, do another one, do another one. You just you build that portfolio through doing things the right way. You know, you got to be patient in this business, it's it's very nerve-wracking it's a lot of stress uh you know but you got to be patient with people you got to know how to talk to people and deal with people i do it every day uh you gotta sometimes hold people's hands and then there's a, there, everybody's different but you got to learn how to deal with every single personality i'm good at that i think it's the salesperson in me that I know how to deal with certain people. Uh, I have a customer now that I've had to hold her hand the whole way. I have another customer that, you know, is a little more hard headed and, uh, and you have the know-it-alls you have, you know, but you, you work with those personalities and you kind of read them and feel them out. And then, then you mesh with that personality. It's hard to explain. It's hard to do, but it comes naturally. I, I don't know. It's weird. I just like to deal with people. I know how to deal with people and it's, you know, they just like our product and how we deliver it, and it's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, dude, I bet. Did you have a problem with, uh, like, starting that in the very beginning? Let's just say, like, the first house that you built, were you, like, having trouble selling, selling it um, at that high price point when you didn't even have, like, a portfolio built yet? No, well, see, with me, it was family owned. So my dad started oh, the good. company. Yeah. So my dad started the company and I came in. Uh, it was after college. I started, I was still, I call my call myself as grunt, uh, where I was digging the ditch and stuff like that with a yeah. college degree. <laughs> and I was ready to leave because I wasn't making much money and I had a degree and I knew I was good at sales. So I started getting interviews with sports teams, stuff like that. I was going to do a job, career in like sports sales and because I always loved sports. But uh, he talked me out of it. I got a real estate license, started pushing his stuff, marketing his stuff. And I kind of grew his business uh, within the last 10 years. We just grew and grew and grew. And I don't think his company's ever done as many houses as we have since I've grown it. And he's not, my dad's really not involved as much anymore right now. Uh, he's still obviously he started the business, but he sees me and my brother handling everything and uh, continues to grow. I promoted us and shifted us into the luxury end. This happened about, and it was a slow shift because uh, I, I knew how to do it the right way. You know, because after the crash and everything, big houses weren't really going up. So we transitioned into smaller stuff, meaning 2,000 to 3,000 square feet. And now we're doing everything from 4,000 to 10,000 square feet. So, but now it's luxury wine rooms, custom built-ins, custom ceiling details. Like everything's like to what the customer wants and envisions. Pinterest pictures all the time, <laughs> you know, but yeah. we make it happen. And it was a lot of work getting there, but it's a lot of people see you know, the last model home we did, I just, I, I was, it was a hundred percent like my, my baby, my work of art. Like I put every idea that I had with the architect into it, uh, worked with my brother and, and just in everything I envisioned, everything, listening to customers, 
hearing what their wants and needs were, went into that house, and it was probably the top model home. We won five major awards on it. Wow. And uh, I picked the decorator that was with it, which I'm good friends with to this day, and he's doing five of our current homes right now, one of the biggest decorating firms in the country. And uh, he continues to grow too. And uh, yeah, he's he's a good friend of mine. He's uh, he needs to be an arte. He's that type of mindset too. Yeah. But uh, it's 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 been good, man. Yeah, yeah, like getting into it when I first got into it, um, we were in a different level. Uh, I I basically remember sitting the first house we did. It was like a eighteen hundred square foot house. That was the first house I. Uh, sat and sold and promoted and uh, then from there now we're doing 10,000 square foot houses and uh, one of the premier builders that people go to for quality and and uh, building them a good product too so it's been a good ride <laughs> yeah man the journey man it sounds yeah. amazing Still <laughs> going. so I plan on growing I plan on expanding in, up the state I want to be in the St. Pete area Treasure Island stuff like that um other coasts i don't know maybe west palm um but we'll see i just kind of want to expand up and into some of these major beach town areas and luxury areas and just kind of be that premier luxury builder and that's like long-term goal no doubt i'm gonna do it and i won't turn into one of the track home type builders or anybody like you know no offense to pulte homes or anything but i don't think i'd do it that big i still want that attention to detail on every project too throughout the process so yeah awesome bro sounds good um yeah, yeah let's get into uh sports cards there we go <laughs> oh yeah man so uh, i know you said that you were into it you know back in the days yeah right so like when did when did you get I mean, back again <laughs> lately uh, with all the hype that's going on right now. I got in. I mean, I was always so I started dabbling in it um, like a year and a half ago. I bought some like random packs. I think we talked about that before. You know, it was like, oh, find a Jordan, find this. I was like, why not? I like here and there over the years, I would be in Walmart and they always had like boxes like up front, yeah. <laughs> open to touch them. And it, uh, I would sometimes grab one, you know, just to kind of have that feeling like I was a kid again and crack it open. And I never <laughs> really knew what I was finding because I wasn't a pain, like, but not, it didn't really hit on much back then. But then I really started money wise getting into it uh, probably back in October, uh, September time. And uh, first, let's say that, let's put it this way my, my first down or my first uh buy two purchases were two national treasures boxes so let's talk about starting nba <laughs> national treasures starting off with a bang um should, <laughs> like we talked about before this should have not opened those but i mean i got some de decent cards out of them uh one of them's in for grading colin sexton card autograph i think that was numbered to 25 and then i have that um Kevin Porter Jr. jersey patch to 10 that I pulled out of that too. And there's some other ones. I don't know what prices they're going to come out of them, but uh, that was the first buy, and then it just went crazy from there. Uh, started buying prism boxes, cracking those every time, looking for Lucas, never found a Luca. Spent a lot of money on those when they were going for like 1200 bucks a pop. And then I was buying the newer, the recent prisms, which at that time those were going for about six hundred a pop. Now they're well over a thousand; they're almost two thousand a, a box. So uh, Zion stuff like that. I'm still out for grading. I sent those in a while ago, which I don't mind because prices are on those cards are taking a little dip right now. But then I start <laughs> smarting, getting smarter with it and learning the thing. And uh, that's when I started investing in the single cards, uh, in past cards. And, um, you know, PSA 10s is usually all I go for. Those are the values that they bring. So I have all PSA 10s and uh, their investments. And some are going to be investments for the rest of my life. Cause I love the players and it's, it's, it's a, it's a fun hobby, man. I've been in stocks. I've been in all that stuff, but there's nothing that compares to this. <laughs> and, 
I'd much rather be buying cards and stocks. Like I was trading stocks today. I'm like, this is, this isn't fun. You know, like, I'm like, what can I get into? This is boring. What's going to make no, you know, th- at least with cards, you're buying an asset you can hold. And you're like, this is the card I've always wanted, like a trout rookie or something like that. And then you get to hold on to that and watch the value go up as they are right now. So I've been telling friends, I got friends texting, <laughs> hey, man, what do you think about this card? Do you think it's worth anything? Now your corners are shot. You know, <laughs> well, what do you think it's worth? And they send me the price. It's like 1200 bucks on eBay. I'm like, you know, it didn't sell for that. Here, here's the actual price. It's $300 PSA 10. What's a PSA 10? Yeah, so I'm getting that all the time. I got people digging through stuff, you know, going through their attics, and it's like, yeah, it's turned into, it's fun, man. I love it. Yeah, and it's actually like you said, like with stocks, because I do, I do some stocks too, um, and uh, like I mean, this like you can actually like hold it, right? You can actually yeah. like look at it and just you know admire it for some time. <laughs> so I, yeah. I get that. I get well, that it's always a converse- yeah it's always a conversation like we were having like i mean it's like this card is like the coolest thing ever dream team like you know we got the olympics coming up the whole crew right there that's the dream team best olympic basketball team of all time and i bought the card just because i thought it was cool uh just to have it yeah i yeah. mean why yeah. not yeah 300. like 300 bucks it's probably worth 600 now with all the craziness and you know it's like i like i said my trout love this yeah. card i'm gonna hold on. i have three of these i'm gonna hold on to one the rest of my life my favorite baseball player i have his autograph too so i just it's fun man it's like i've never i'm, I'm glad it's back i hope it stays back uh, i think we got some time with it at least and i hope it doesn't get over too overblown because cards are going up at ridiculous pace right now oh, yeah. and that's what you fear but uh it's i hope people can enjoy it unfortunately if i was a kid i wouldn't be able to enjoy it because you gotta have some cash yeah. to how ridiculous <laughs> some of this stuff is yeah you would be trying to go buy the packs at walmart and then there's nothing yeah. you know when when back in the day you would go and there was tons of them there Hobby shops packed. too, everywhere. You know, yeah. you just go into a hobby shop and buy packs for like two bucks, and now you're <laughs> Walmart. They're not even. They're not there. And if they are there, you're spending twenty five dollars. It's like, what? What? Yeah. Uh, you know, how? How can a kid do this? <laughs> <laughs> the, the only other place you find them on are eBay, and they're over like a grand now. Oh yeah, it's like it's it's insane, dude. Yeah, it's fun. Though. I mean, I enjoy it. We're we're all older now. We're all like you know living our childhood again like we all used to break cards open and crack them and and collect as kids and it's just it's fun like i i hope it does stay around this time for a long time because we had that gap where it just kind of faded out which me and you like we talked about would have been buying during that gap because we'd be uh sitting in different houses on the beach uh a lot is right now but uh You know, it's it's fun. I hope it maintains itself. Like I really enjoy doing it. I really enjoy kind of watching prices. I look at prices every day. Like I look at the stock market every day. It's like it's crazy. But I'm instead of looking at stocks and being like, well, how did that go up? That doesn't make sense. I'm looking at cards. I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. That Luca should have went up. Like <laughs> killed him last night. Another triple double last night. I know he's gonna be up by. You know, hopefully they make playoffs or if he's an all-star or whatever, you know, you can kind of check this market out and, and just enjoy being a part of it. It's sports, man. It's awesome. It's fun. Yeah, dude, for sure. I'm, uh, I mean, like I do, like I, I, I'm not into it. Like I'm not like buying as much as I want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I dude. overbought. <laughs> Oh yeah, but <laughs> I, I don't even want to say the number I'm in right now. But yeah, it's it's I got a lot of money into it. But I've learned too how to get my money back because I'm doing it the right way now after trial and error. You know, so buying all those modern boxes like I did, I, I wish I would have just bought from the beginning like a LeBron or instead uh, yeah, of yeah. That's, that's spending as much money as I did on boxes and open ripping boxes to find what are you looking for a zion a jaw or or one other card you know it's like that's all you're searching for and the rest are sitting in a drawer right now that are worth a dollar a piece if that so it's <laughs> like 
it's like I wish I would have just put all that money into a, a LeBron rookie and I'd be sitting nicely right now. So I learned, you know, you got to learn, you got to go through the trial and error. So if anybody's listening to this, going through looking at cards, try and buy some PSA tens is my, my, uh, advice. If there's a guy you think that's up and coming, uh, just go with your gut. Don't be afraid to pull the trigger. Yeah, eventually he'll go up. He'll have a crazy game, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, soccer, I mean, everything's going off. Marvel, if you oh, like yeah, X-Men, yeah. like Vice, wrestling. <laughs> wrestling, UFC, like you like McGregor, his stuff's nuts right now. I mean, there's a Pokemon, like there's something out there for everybody in this, which that that's not, you know, the stock market doesn't have that. This does to where everybody can enjoy it, make some money, flip cards, you know, like go to garage sales, like have fun with it. You know, it's it's fun, man. I I'm like like a kid again. You know. Yeah, yeah. I have a lot of people. I have a lot of people that reply to my story saying, "Oh man, I you know I used to have um, all these like old baseball cards, you know, and I have them somewhere. I just can't find them." Yeah, I get that. <laughs> all the time. Like, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> oh man. Or they ask me like, you know, which ones are the good ones? You know, like which which uh which cards or which players? And I'm just like, I mean, you just have to really. Like I'm not like I watch basketball every once in a while, but it's like I mean you just have to see who the good player is. Yeah. You know, like if you don't know anything about cards, like you just have to see who the good player is, and then you know like do research on that player, and then you'll see like the you know his price, and then you know you'll go into the rabbit hole from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's fun. I mean, it's fun too. It makes you more interested in the sport. Like yeah. I was watching basketball oh, yeah. for a little bit. Now I have the NBA on whenever it's on, and I have it on in the background. You know, while I'm sorting cards, go figure. But you know, it's like <laughs> it, I don't really watch regular TV. All I really do is watch sports, YouTube, some movies here and there. You know, new movies haven't really been coming out, out too often. So it's like, but I'm a big sports fan, and I get friends. I had one last night texting me. He had uh, sent me some cards. Uh, one of them was a Frank Thomas rookie card, tops rookie card, which I said that in a PSA ten would be about three hundred dollars. See, I know all this because I'm so into it. Tiffany edition would be about $1,200, I told him, because he sent me the price of the Tiffany edition, special edition card, and the Frank Thomas. And I go, well, that's, let me see the back. So I helped him out, and you can tell certain things with cards. I mean, I'm getting deep into this, man. We can go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I have fun. It's it's all like it's fun sending them in, seeing what your grades are gonna be, picking through stuff. Like, you know, everybody back in our day had some kind of collection. You know, it's like, what's next? You know, are Beanie Babies gonna go off again? You know, like I saw those one day. I was like, I wonder if those things are gonna go off when because those were big. You know, Pokemon's exploded. Everything's like, you know, history always repeats itself. I hope. Mm -hmm. I think cards are here to stay for for a little while. I know they're probably going to prices are going to come down. They always fluctuate. That's the way the market is. Are the historical players going to come down? I mean, you you're purchasing and how many people can buy and afford to buy an MJ for a million bucks? You know, it's like <laughs> yeah, there's a few guys that want it, but then it's going to have to come down at some point. But then these guys are determining values too. Like, is a Mickey Mantle really worth five point two million? You know, is that is that supposed to be five? I don't know. Maybe if it is to you, you know, is Mike Trout worth a million one day? Maybe he's not when he's not playing baseball anymore and has a risk of blowing a knee out. Right when he yeah. blows, if you knock on one, please don't blow your knee out, Mike. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's that. like the risk you're taking but just have fun with it too i mean you can't worry about the money with it just buy what you like play the sport or buy the sports you like and you know kind of go with it and that's what i've been doing and a lot of the stuff man like i would have never thought i got players like you know uh i bought i think aaron judge is gonna go off i mean there's an aaron judge refractor right here these are cheap right now in my opinion for sports cards but this guy's a stud he's just been injury prone um christian yelich i got like christian yelich he had one of the best seasons in baseball two years ago and got hurt people forget about that he was one of the top hitters in the league um i got a few of his rookies right now they're 
cheap in my opinion, but the guy can hit and uh, he is one of the top baseball players out there. So it's yeah. like, think about this stuff. If you know the sports and you think about stuff, when players get injured, people kind of tend to forget about them. I'd buy those players because when they come back, they'll probably come back to what they were, especially with baseball. Pitchers, Tommy John, they're better pitchers after it. Think about that. See, I'm helping you guys out there. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know you got to go, like, you know, do your workout and all that shit, but uh, I just want to ask you one last question. I know you're, like, ruined to baseball, dude. What do you think about this guy? Uh, he, up and coming. I'm not big. That's a good, that's going to be a good card to have. I mean, he's obviously going to be something in the future. I'm not big, like, I'm not riding the Tatis train and all the, like, yeah, these guys, <laughs> the Juan. So I think Juan Soto is a great hitter. I'm more into the established players. Okay. Let's put it this way. I played fantasy baseball for like eight years straight and I won th- that league probably out of the eight years, I think I won six years. Like I just know baseball for some reason. I just, I never bought into the rookie hype. I'd kind of, yeah, some of them would come out and they'd explode, but pitchers figure them out. Uh, pitchers learn real quick and then those rookies got to adjust themselves. That's how baseball works. Pitchers aren't dumb. They're professionals for a reason. Yeah. So, you know, when a f- player first comes out, they don't know how they're going to hit. They don't know how to put pitch them. So those players usually can go off like your trouts, stuff like that when they first came out. But then they have that slump, sophomore slump. And I mean, to tease like uh, like your, you, who you just showed me right there, it's Dominguez, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jason. He's, yeah. It's he, he's going to start. He's probably not even going to start in the, in the majors this season, I don't think, is he? I don't know why. Well, yeah, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. But uh, he probably will for – we'll see. I mean, spring training always is what kind of determines everything too. But um, I like him. That's a good long-term hold. Uh, people rushing to buy, um, you know, some of these young guys now. I'm not one of them. I don't own Juan Soto's card. I want to, but I don't think now is the time to buy him. Yeah. Uh, my advice on baseball, I did buy early. I'm not buying anymore right now. Uh, I'm going to wait till mid season to buy again. Like with basketball now, if you guys are listening out there, buy right now. Um, <laughs> so the Trey Youngs, the Lucas, the, all those guys are in a, and are all in a dip because it is mid season. They're everybody's focus is on the old school players, the Kobe's, the Michaels, the Shaq's, all that so there's an opportunity for you while everybody's in one area you buy in another so uh that's my advice there same with baseball right now there's some hype once spring training hits those cards are all going to explode even more and then once mid-season hits they're all going to come down uh because the hype breaks away and people start focusing on other things and griffey rookie i mean that one's a classic player that card's gone up tremendously it's about six grand now for one of those rookies but i see griffey hitting over 10k so um at some point especially when baseball starts and it's top of mind to people when i don't know how crazy (laughs) things are i don't know but we'll see but yeah it's it's a good card to own long term i mean right now i'm investing in like you know i'm in i'm more of the you know, Aaron Otto's, that's his card. He just got traded. Um, this one's one you can pick up for cheap. Pete Alonzo. A lot of people that know baseball. That's Topps Chrome of him. Uh, Pete Alonzo is the Mookie Betts. That's the man right there. Dodgers now. This guy's a stud every single year. Uh, my Yelich. I have a Yelich collection because I think Christian Yelich is a hell of a player. That's an auto chrome. Uh, This one's a cheap one to pick up. Anthony Rendon, always a solid player every single year all around. Uh, What else we got? There's that Tommy John for you. Recommended pickup. Severino, New York Yankees picture. He's not their ace because... Coles are eights, but you shall see those people that are laughing on the other end of the mic. (laughs) And then this stud right here, people forget about him, Rice Hoskins, Phillies. That guy was a home run stud. Nobody's talking about him. And then my boy Joey Gallo, 
This guy's a home run hitter here too. Easily 50 plus. So you got to know this. And then your boy, Giancarlo. Uh, Mike Stanton back in the day. That's a good rookie to own right there too. He's cheap right now. If he can stay healthy, these guys stay healthy. They hit over 50 home runs. Those cards are all going up. So they're, they're discount buys right now. It would, depending on what you think is a discount. But to me, I think if they're discount, they're going to go up. So there's yeah. your there's your advice of the day <laughs> on the card world if you guys are thinking about investing. So. Shit. All right, man. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good, dude. So uh, before we wrap up here, just tell the listeners where they can find you and everything you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate it. You guys can find me on Instagram. It's at I'm Bill Ryman. I... The, the letter I and the letter M, Bill Ryman. Uh, somebody took Bill Ryman. The guy's not too active, so <laughs> he does. Oh, wow. But I was kind of pissed off about that. So mine's I'm Bill Ryman. So you find me there on Instagram. Uh, Hobby Hour is my card, little card shop. My podcast is The Real Build Podcast. Irvin was on that with me. Go check out our episode. You guys want to hear about some electrical. And then there's plenty of other things about building and construction and real estate on there as well facebook linkedin uh youtube on all of those bill ryman it's hard not to find me so that's that's pretty much it man i appreciate yeah. you having me on yeah man for sure man thanks for taking the time being on the show thank you appreciate awesome. it awesome man how's it going